Hello everyone, for the third time we're here back in my kitchen um, to give you another experiment to try at home. Now the last two have been tempted. We had the Skittles where I spent most of the time eating Skittles. The egg one was just disgusting, so I think it's about time we actually do something that we can eat. Today we're going to make some ice cream. Let's get going. Those transitions are getting worse aren't they? So the experiment itself is actually quite nice and simple. I'm going to rate it two stars. The reason for this is it is simple, but there's also a danger because ice is cold. So we're going to make sure we're nice and safe in that regard. Let's get to the experiment. You'll need Ziploc freezer bags. Now, don't scrimp with these, okay? Make sure that they're the nice uh, thick ones uh, and that they seal with a Ziploc um, or something like that. Um, they're gonna be taking a little bit of a beating, so um, the more sturdy that they are, the better. Some form of Tupperware plastic container. You could also use a bigger Ziploc bag, but the Sainsbury's I went to, um, the only shop in town, doesn't have any of the bigger ones, so I'm using a Tupperware container. A bigger Ziploc bag would actually probably be better because it will enable us to um, reduce the size of those ice crystals. Ice. Okay, um, I just bought a bag of ice because uh, it was easier than making loads and loads of ice cubes myself, but of course, do that, it's probably easier and better for the environment. Some form of table salt. You're going to need quite a lot of this, so don't go fancy or anything like that. Nice big container of table salt. Some form of pre-flavoured milk. You can do it properly with cream and sugar, but it's just so much easier to buy already pre-flavoured um, milk. After my test run, I'm going to make it a little bit sweeter, so I'm going to add in a little bit of sugar, but that's not necessary. The end product with this turned out a little bit like a mini milk. And I like a mini milk, but I'm gonna make it a little bit sweeter. Because why not? Some form of gloves. You need some protection from the cold. It's cold. So now we've got the equipment, we're ready to actually do our experiment. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of those Ziploc bags and the flavored milk, and I'm going to fill the bag about halfway. Don't wanna fill it all the way, because then it will take too long to freeze and might uh, cause problems down the road. Okay, just an alternative angle so you know precisely how much. Uh, about that is plenty. If anything, I've probably done too much, but um, yeah, no more than that really. I'm also going to add a couple of teaspoons of sugar um, for my own personal taste. Okay, so now we have our bag full of milk, we've got to cool that down. Now the thing with ice cream is, is you don't want the ice crystal to be too big. You know this because if you've ever had ice cream melt and you've put it back in the freezer, it turns into a big lump of ice really, and isn't that tasty. So the process of making ice cream revolves around pummeling those crystals so that they keep very small and you get a nice smooth ice cream. That's why we're gonna be constantly moving this bag of milk. However, if I just do it with my hands, it's not gonna get cold enough to turn into ice cream. That's where the ice comes in. Okay, so I'm gonna take my Tupperware box and the ice. And I'm going to quite generously fill that tub uh, with ice. Now I've done that, I'm going to take my table salt and I'm going to add a really generous amount of salt in there. Okay. That really is quite a lot of salt. So it's now going to reduce the temperature below zero. 
I'm going to take my bag of milk, put it in the tub. You might want to lift some of the ice and put some ice on top. Now you'll notice that this is cold, so now is the time that you might want to start thinking about putting a glove on. I'm now going to put the lid on. I've probably overfilled this device actually. Oh well, now I'm going to put that lid on. And now it's a case of shaking it for probably 20 minutes. Every so often you might want to open the box, um, wriggle around the milk and uh, reset it. This is where having a bigger bag is probably better because you can kind of have access to that milk from the outside and start to pump it up. But anyway, let's get shaking. 20 minutes later. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes of shaking. Uh, every two or three minutes, um, I take the lid off and with, with gloves on, I just break up any ice crystals. I think that's a problem with using a tub is it's less likely to break, but you're not really pulverizing of that ice crystals. And I'll show you how it's turned out. So if I take the lid off, okay, you can see that that has started to form and has indeed formed ice cream. So, now I've made it, let's serve it up and eat it. So there we have a bowl of chocolate ice cream. Um, obviously, sprinkles, whatever, but enjoy. So how does this work? Over to the explainer. I have here a diagram of a solid and here a diagram of a liquid. Now, when I turn from a solid to a liquid, this happens at a particular temperature for each substance, and we call that a melting point. Now, for pure water, that melting point is zero degrees Celsius. That's actually how the scale is based. Now, what that means is, is at this temperature, any heat which is added into the substance goes into melting and breaking apart those particles into water. That means it will stay at zero degrees C until all of those particles are broken apart, it's fully into a liquid, and then it can heat up from there. Now, this process of melting actually absorbs energy from its surroundings to melt it. Now, that means that the surroundings get colder. So, by having melting ice, the surroundings get colder, that includes the milk, and it can turn into ice cream. However, why do we bother adding the salt? Well, there's actually two reasons for this. The first thing is if I go back to the liquid, okay, this is what the liquid looks like in salt water, okay? And you can see that actually it's gonna be quite difficult to turn it into solid because I've got the salt particles in the way and they kind of muck it up, they kind of get in the way. And that means that it takes more energy for that to happen, okay? Or Sorry, that's a harder process for that to happen. So that means that the melting point of salt water is actually minus five degrees. We use this because in, on a cold winter, okay, we grit the roads and that prevents the water um, and the moisture on the roads overnight freezing and turning into ice because it needs to reach that lower temperature. So first of all, by adding salt, we lower that melting point of the ice and that means that that ice can get colder which means that we can freeze our milk into ice cream easier. The other thing, okay, is that the actual act of dissolving, okay, so we've said that that um, absorbs energy and makes the surroundings colder. The actual act of dissolving salt in water itself also takes energy. Now, both of these have the key term endothermic, both the salt dissolving in water and the fact that when something melts, it requires energy. What does that word endothermic mean? Well, I can break the word down into two halves. Okay. Endo means like enter or take in, and thermic means heat. So both of those processes are endothermic, so that means they take in heat and they can freeze our ice cream. So I hope you found that one more enjoyable. You get the benefit of having something to eat. How can you take this any further? 
Well, perhaps you could try different uh, milks, you could try different flavours, you could try it with cream, and you could see also maybe how the ratio of salt and ice affects, because I didn't take any measurements there. If you have a thermometer, you could even check the ice slash ice slash water mix at various times and see how the temperature is affected. As always, thank you for um, being so receptive to these and I hope to see you soon.